What is going on everybody? Welcome to the sixth Monte Carlo and Python tutorial video. In this video we're going to kind of expand on our uh, double or better guy and give ourselves a little bit of statistics on the outcome of this better. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So down here, what we're going to want to do is add um, a few more variables here. So first we're just going to say xx equals zero. That's just going to be our counter. And then we're also going to have a broke count. And that's going to be zero to start, but obviously eventually uh, we'll, we'll get some more broke people. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say while xx is less than, let's do a thousand. So we'll have a thousand examples. Uh, we want to run double or better. And then xx plus equals one. And at the end of that, we'll go ahead and show. Uh, the other thing we want to do is we want to update this broke count. So we'll come all the way up here and we're going to add in uh, a global variable here and that global variable is going to be uh, broke underscore count. And then down here every time we go broke we're just going to add one to broke count. So here we went broke after x bets, broke count plus equals one. Just copy that, we come down here, broke count plus equals one. So then once we've done that part, uh, the other thing we wouldn't mind doing since we have a thousand of these guys is we don't need to be printing out everything that happens. Otherwise we've got a long way to go. So we'll just comment out all of the printing we're doing here. We've got a lot of prints happening. Print, 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 print. Got this print, and this print. And we'll even get rid of value. Uh, and then at the very end, we'll we'll leave that one there. That's not a problem. Um, and actually, you know, we'll just get rid of it because we can see it anyways. So we've got that going on now. So the next thing that we want to do, let's see. Uh, did we add the? Okay, we've got broke count. So now at the very end, like before plot dot show, let's do a print and we'll do death rate. And so this is just gonna be like how many betters broke. Um, so it's gonna be broke underscore count divided by float xx. And we have to just say float xx so it'll give us what we're looking for. And then times 100, so it's a, it's a percentage. Then we'll go ahead and print uh, survival rate. And survival rate is, of course, uh, basically the opposite of this. So 100 minus uh, broke count divided by float xx times 100. And we'll put this in parentheses as well. OK. And then, uh, just to show us our break line, we're going to do plot.axh uh, line. And then where do we want that horizontal line at the zero? And what color do we want it to be? Red, because it's uh, showing who failed. And that should be it. So we've got a, let's run a hundred just first, uh, just to see if this is working. So that should be everything we need. So let's go ahead and run it. And sure enough, here we go. We've got our guys here. And it looks like, I don't see anybody that broke. It's claiming people did go broke though. So here we go, after a thousand bets and a hundred betters, the death rate is apparently 78% and the survival rate is 22%. I think the difference is we just were breaking before we actually plot the loss. So probably a lot of these guys lost. Again, we'll fix this, um, we'll fix this soon. Anyway, uh, so we can see the guys are, who you know survived was 22%, but of the 22% of people that survived, um, you can see that you actually did pretty well. So the, at the end of the day, you have to kind of weigh the costs uh, or the risks versus rewards here, uh, because if you succeeded with this strategy, you're, you're doing probably okay. <laughs> you know, you actually made a good amount of return. So if you did this over and over, you might do a well, okay. Now let's see if this figure sticks. And instead of only 100 betters, let's do 1,000 betters and see if the death and survival rate, they should be relatively similar. Um, so we can see survival rate 
uh, actually went up a little bit with the more better. So this is a, a more realistic sampling. Um, anyway, so we've got that. Um, and let's do 10,000 for one more just to see. My guess is it's probably closer to 75 and 24, but... Um, <laughs> well, we had a lot of failure initially. Uh, oh, my bad. I was, I was editing the wrong number. This is wager count, so obviously if they do a lot enough wagers, a lot of these guys will die eventually because they're carrying a lot of risk. But with 1,000 wagers, it's not that much risk. Anyway, let's do 10,000 betters. Again, hopefully it's going to... It should be closer to 75 and 24, though. Wait for it. Maybe I'll pause it while we wait or something. And actually, we see here that the death rate is more likely the original results that we had, about 78 and 22. Um, anyway, a much larger sample size here, but you know, all these died. Died, died, died. <laughs> anyway, but... With only, let's say, they only go through 100 wagers, uh, we'll just do 1,000 of these guys. If they're only doing 100 wagers, you can see now that the survival rate is actually pretty good um, with only 100 wagers. And not only is it pretty good, but as long as you weren't one of these people at the end, um, you made pretty good money. You maybe got almost a 50% return for some of these guys. Now, overall, we still want to find out um, it's not just did you go broke. The other question is, of course, what we're discussing right now. Did you actually make money? And so how many people went broke? And of the people that didn't go broke, how many of those people made money? So that's where we're going to keep kind of digging into this and see how good this kind of strategy actually is. And then again, like I mentioned, we'll actually use the Monte Carlo simulator to actually find us the perfect multiple. Because really, a multiple of two might not be the best. Maybe the best idea is a multiple of three. And the other question is, what's our wager size? So um, the wager size is most likely going to correspond to be a percentage of how much total wealth you have. But maybe the better starting wager would be something like $30 and triple every time you lose or $30 and multiply by 1.5 every time you lose. You know, you know, you don't know uh, until you actually play it out and see uh, what the outcome is. So that's what we're going to end up using Monte Carlo for, is to actually find all of those numbers. And probably, I'm guessing, the most significant number that we'll find is what fraction of your starting pot should you wager each time. Uh, because that's obviously directly correlated to how much risk you're, you're taking on. So anyways, that's what you guys have to look forward to in the future videos. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.